Hello and welcome to the Digitally Overwhelmed Podcast. My name is Cynthia Pacheco and I'm on a mission to help online businesses step out of digital overwhelm and step into their creative potential. This podcast is all about helping women get more in tune with the analytics and SEO side of their business without the digital burnout. Get more information about the podcast at digitalbloomiq.com. Hey, welcome to the Digitally Overwhelmed podcast. I'm Cynthia, your host, and I run Digital Bloom IQ, where I help health and wellness businesses get found in Google and heal more of the world. This is episode 139 of the podcast, and I'm super, super excited because I got to talk to Cassandra Van Triet. She is the owner of Wosh Wellness, and this is actually a case study uh, interview. So we, it's kind of like a fun hybrid interview actually, because we talk a lot about her business, um, her process. She does her own business coaching apart from her Wosh teas. And we get into that in the interview quite a bit. Uh, but we also just talk about the experience she had with uh, working with me through my own SEO process and we talk about some of the results she's gotten from SEO and how her, not just her website traffic, but her sales have really been impacted um, by the process that I took her through. And something I pride myself in that I'm always thinking about and I'm always just obsessing about is the experience that clients have of doing SEO with me because there are a lot of um, there are a lot of articles on the internet about SEO. Um, and it's actually funny when you, as an SEO expert, when you rank in SEO, it's quite competitive, right? Because you're, you're working against other experts who know how to rank. <laughs> so it's kind of a weird, anyway, weird thing to think about. But um, I am just so passionate about the SEO process being a nice experience. Uh, I've heard just so many horror stories of working with SEO agencies that don't like they have bad communication or the results aren't there, or it just feels like this alien thing. And I want, I want the experience of working through your ranking and working through your website to be a very cozy and fun and exciting, intuitive, creative, um, encompassing experience that is very, very much in unison with what's going on in the rest of your business and the rest of your marketing. Marketing. So we talk a lot about that. And for example, one of the things um, Cassie mentions is the writing process that I took her through and how it really changed and it shifted how she saw all the writing she was doing on her, on her blog and on her website to attract new visitors. So it's a really fun interview and it's really inspiring. I love, I love what she's doing. And I think she also has a lot of wisdom to share in terms of being a business owner online and being entrepreneur and being vulnerable with our mistakes and being transparent with where we are in the journey. And I think that's why she's gotten such great results from SEO as well, because she's been open to trying uncomfortable things, but also super in touch with what she wants to do and her impact. So yes, I am really excited and I hope that you enjoy this interview with Cassie. Hey Cassie, welcome to the podcast. Hi Cynthia, how are you? I'm doing very well, um, having a quiet day, but I'm really excited to, uh, speak with you today. Uh, I've been, well, we've been working together for, so it's been over like six to eight months now, right? Um, I think it's eight. Last time yeah. I counted, I was like, wow, I was like, you've been a part of like the team <laughs> for so long. <laughs> yeah. And I just had you in my mind for at least a couple months now to bring you on the podcast, partly because of the great SEO results you've gotten, but also because I really appreciate uh, your approach to business in general, and you've done certain things inside of your your brand that have 
inspired me and gotten me to think about things. So I think you're just a great guest <laughs> and a great use case. And yeah, welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. And yeah, I mean, likewise, you've taught me so much and you've also taken so much off of my plate, which has been amazing. Um, so yeah, no, I really appreciate you having me on and chatting with me today. Yeah. So why don't we kick off with, why don't you go ahead and tell the audience a little bit about your brand and about, yeah, what you guys do. Totally. Yes. So I am the founder of Wosh Wellness. We are a Vancouver based loose leaf tea brand that bridges the gap between traditional herbal medicine and modern wellness. Uh, we aim to kind of encourage health aware individuals, nourish their bodies from within by carefully crafting like our loose leaf tea blends, um, by utilizing like their natural benefits and healing properties of each herb and each ingredient um, to kind of nourish from within and really, you know, encourage our community to become more intuitive about their practices and what they're putting inside their bodies and, and kind of simplifying that process all at the same time. Um, and just kind of encouraging people to, you know, kind of get back to the roots of tea and herbalism and natural healing and just like how we're surrounded by it in, you know, especially here on the West coast. Um, you know, you can, you probably stumble upon and probably step on, you know, plants that are so healing for different ailments and, um, that we all suffer from every day. So that's kind of where we come from, um, and kind of where it all started. And yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of Woj in a nutshell, I guess. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. It's so needed nowadays. Um, people need to, yeah, find themselves, I guess, in a way. And that's one of the, one of the reasons I want to bring you on the podcast is I, I think you have a really great ability to identify not just what people need, but specifically in this time that we're living in, uh, just this need to slow down and to like introspection and all that stuff. We just today I was reflecting, like I tend to personally look for answers externally and I very externally based. And mm -hmm. I was like, why do I do that? And I guess, I guess that's conditioning, you know, it just kind of hit me. Oh, no. And I think that's very much connected with Woj. For sure. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely been, you know, a learning process for myself personally and professionally. And, and yeah, like when I, when I was starting Woj, it was, it's really, I mean, at the end of the day, it's really about connecting people back to their bodies and, and that intuitive part. And I've really become a very strong believer in the past, you know, little while along my journey and things that I've experienced about, you know, we, we carry all the answers, um, you know, everything that we need, everything our body needs, everything our body craves, um, you know, and that's on like, you know, um, kind of an emotional aspect plus a nourishment aspect um, and physical like it kind of comes from like all of the different senses and and yeah we we all everything that we need to know is is all held within us and i think we've just kind of lost that trust piece yeah. um and it, yeah again it's conditioning. it really is we've never been encouraged to you know oh hey well, what's your body telling you listen to your body or maybe check in with your body or um maybe get quiet like you don't need to know the answer right now like maybe you're the type of person that needs to wait 24 hours or maybe you're the person that needs to wait like a full moon cycle like whatever that is right. um yeah, that's kind of, I love that you said that because it is, we were definitely external people and that comes from, you know, like external validation and, you know, we want everyone's approval and I just think things are, times are changing and we're definitely on the very early brink of everyone really getting to know themselves a lot more and, you know, we're in a time right now, um, you know, COVID where we're all kind of pressured to do that, so mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are being called to, yeah, kind of, you know, they're track, we're, we're actually being called to kind of rely on ourselves a lot more, which I think is really, really cool and really beautiful in the, in the whole scheme of things. So, yeah, yeah, this whole virus thing has really forced us to, um, mm -hmm. to look at that stuff and tend to ourselves in many ways. And I also feel like there's a part of Woj that, is all about, uh, well, yeah, slowing down, like your whole me time. Um, you have a tea and you have like a bunch of blog posts about people that you've interviewed with me time. And that's also, again, it feels so, there's something about it that's like fascinating because it's like, why don't we see that as attractive? What is it? Why is there like, 
again, this whole external thing is like the answers are outside us and, you know, read a book or, you know, watch a movie or something. And I, I see that that's there, but what is it about just spending time internally that's hard? And anyway, tea connects really well with that idea. Oh, <laughs> the yeah. whole experience I mean, that's, of tea. I think that's, that's very twofold for me. Like it's me time. I mean, when you talked about, yeah, kind of who we interview on the blog. So I basically created um, a me time campaign. I think this was last September. And um, I just really wanted to create this safe space and this platform for people to share um, what I call the me t- their me time moments. And when, when I kind of dubbed that as, and, and the definition that I interpret that, that as is like a pivotal moment along your journey that really made you go inward and make a choice that really like pivoted you like along your journey to kind of head into a different direction basically. And right. I can't, and this kind of, you know, we have, we came up with this me time tea and that's kind of where it all started. And I was like, you know, the name of it, I was like, Oh, this is great. It's per, it's great for marketing. People love it. It's their best selling tea. Um, and it's basically, you know, it's designed to kind of, you know, help you kind of encourage you to have that me time. And, you know, even let, let alone that's just making the tea for that five to 10 minutes, right. or it's like, it's an accent to your whole ritual where it's like you make your, your, your cup of me time, you're journaling or you're meditating, or maybe you're out on a walk in nature, whatever that looks like for you. Right. Um, and yeah, our big driving theme is that, and that is that like, you know, everyone's me time and everyone's needs and, and kind of on every front is really going to look different for everybody. And um, yeah. And it, so it kind of started there and then it kind of escalated. Now we've basically created this, this online safe space for people to share their me time moments. And I just think there's so much can happen in those moments of reflection and like looking inward rather than outward, like you're saying. Um, Cause it's so, yeah, it's just, we've been basically shamed to like having me time has basically been shamed. Like I bet you, you know, yeah. majority I, like maybe yourself, myself included, and maybe people listening are very like, you know, the thought of having me time, there's an instant guilt there. There's an instant, like, I can't have that. I don't deserve it. You know, I'm guilty or like, what's my husband going to think? Or what's my boyfriend going to think? Or my partner? Um, Are they going to judge me like that? It's like lazy time or it's unnecessary or whatever that looks like. So it's definitely been an interesting um, avenue to navigate through our brand and I've learned so much and it's been so cool to connect with people, especially through that platform and hear people's moments. Like I, I ran into somebody um, who actually her name's Mish Coles. I'll call her out. She's so, she's such an amazing human. And she basically shared a very vulnerable point, um, like, like pivotal moment of her life. And, and it was recent too. And she basically came up to me after and she says, like, I thank you so much. She's like, that's the first time I ever shared that with anyone. Wow. And it gave me goosebumps. I was like, for, you know, I just, that was the intention of the platform was that to create this space where people could share these moments and then other people reading them could, you know, connect with them and be like, you know, and, and relate to them in some sort of avenue where, you know, they saw themselves in that and it just gives them that encouragement that, you know, we're all in this together and no one's alone and, you know, everyone's kind of, you never know. You like, if, if you met her, you'd never know. So it's, it's just so crazy to see and connect with people on this, on this different level. So I love it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. And I do, uh, I do relate to the guilt around <laughs> my, my own time mm-hmm. and, I think it's especially now because, well, I worked a lot from home before, but with the virus, my partner has been home more and yeah, sometimes I'll finish work and I'll be like, I just want to do nothing. And it's hard. I will say though, I live in Argentina, you know, Cassie, you know that, and here the culture is much more, uh, it has, there's a whole word that's called literally doing nothing on purpose. There's like a word for that. Oh, I love um, that. I should move there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's one of the reasons I think I live here, but, uh, basically it's just, you know, the mate. Well, yeah, you know about mate, right? Like the tea that they drink here. Yeah. Like there's a whole vibe around that of like slowly sipping it and like there's a ritual and stuff. So it's, it's the same vibe and still like, I still struggle with this after living, you know, here for many years. 
Um, but it is, I think it's, especially for women, it's something we struggle with because we, we're just wanting to be, I guess, productive or we want to be useful. And it's hard to realize that that time of doing nothing or doing on purpose, doing nothing is actually very, um, very nice. And, and it can give back to you in so many ways. Oh, for sure. I think it's so crucial for, for anyone's day-to-day -day practice. And my mine has grown into a non-negotiable. I, I pretty much spend about, I'd say about an hour to an hour, for sure an hour, an hour and a half. Sometimes it lags into two hours every morning. And it's, my husband knows not to bug me. And it's just, yeah, it's my me time. And if I don't do it, like I can tell throughout the day how it's, how, it, how differently it's set up. Uh, my day for sure so it's yeah it's just definitely become a non-negotiable but it, it takes a lot of work and boundaries yeah. and you know because not everyone's going to really accept it and you know I find whenever I'm like traveling or that you know you kind of get knocked off course a bit but you also got to give yourself grace for that you know you can't right. it's not an everyday you know it, it's not it can't always be an everyday thing and you kind of got to give yourself that that grace and compassion to be like, you know what, today's, it's just not going to happen today. And that's totally fine. Yeah. So. Yeah. Or it doesn't always look like we think it will. Like sometimes the me time might happen in the shower. <laughs> like I'm sure we've all had that experience of like, oh, you just spend that. that extra five to 10 minutes. Like you're not really washing yourself. You're just sitting or standing <laughs> there. Um, I love that time. So it doesn't always have to look like a meditative, like Buddha sort of thing. It could yeah. just be a walk or maybe some time in the car alone. The car is like amazing, right? Cause you literally are really alone. Um, oh, totally. No, I love that you said that. And, and we're big believers over here at Walsh that, me time looks very different for everyone and it will look different every day. Like my practice every day doesn't look, look the same. Like that's kind of where that intuitive piece comes in. You know, I check in with myself. Do I, you know, am I seeking fresh air and you know, that morning sunrise or, or like an outside walk in nature, or am I really just needing to kind of rest longer? So maybe that's like a slow yoga stretch and then maybe like a Shavasana for, for a while with right. like, you know, some real beats on like, it looks so different every day. And again, I think that's where people, again, are seeking external. They're like, okay, what are, you know, what are these me time ideas or what are, what can I do? Or what's everyone else doing? Or what's the new trend? Journaling, meditating, um, what kind of yoga practice? You know, it's kind of like, we're always like, what's the new trend? But it's like, no, you need to go inward. Like, what does your body need? Is that rest? Is that, you know, a, maybe like a quite extraneous hike? Um, is it alone time? Is it, and sometimes me time can even look like being around people. If that's really what lights you up and really refuels you and recharges you when you're around people, then that's your me time. You just kind of got to figure out what it is. Yeah. So, I love that. <clears throat> yeah, it's good. Uh, so, so yeah, so I wanted to bring you on one of the many reasons, obviously we have a lot to talk about, uh, mm -hmm. is that, uh, your site, has had great results with the SEO work that we've done. And over the last six months, I looked up and I'm going to include some of this data in the blog post that's going to accompany this podcast episode. Uh, but you've had over 100% traffic growth and you've um, had an increase in your sales, your online sales. And yeah, we've, you know, we targeted those initial, just for everybody to understand kind of the work that we did. Yeah, uh, initially, I guess, starting in September of last year, I guess it was, or yeah. August? Yeah, we started in October. Oh, October. Uh, yeah. Good. Okay. Uh, and we did, yeah, I did an initial audit. So that's the first step of the process. And basically, I just looked at how your site was performing now. How old is your site now? Uh, the website went live September 2018. Okay. So yeah, so it was a little bit over a year, um, well, yeah, less than a year when we started. Yeah. So the site didn't have too many errors or anything, but there were still a couple things to improve on. And then we just kicked off with your content strategy. And so that's the second phase where we implemented a couple of different blog posts um, over the next couple of months. And now we're in kind of more of a monitoring phase and um, we're still making a lot of changes, slowly but it's not as intensive maybe as that first that first moment um totally. so i want to know kind of from your perspective because i have you know my whole process and my 
SEO nerd stuff happening, but like what parts of that process on your side did you find the most difficult or yeah, just the most like, oh, okay, this is a little bit interesting. Um, and then what other parts did you find like the most interesting or enlightening or inspiring? Yeah. I mean, there's so much there. Um, again, you, yeah, you've kind of transformed our website for sure. We, uh, I remember in the beginning and like, I've always known about SEO. I come from a business background and, and I was always like, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. But like anytime anyone hears SEO, like even me, I'm like, I just crumble. I'm like, nope, don't want to talk about it. Like, let's not. So, um, yeah, when I worked with a copywriter and she recommended you, I was like, Oh my goodness, this is a game changer. If I can bring, you know, an expert on, who knows what they're doing. You focus in the health and wellness industry, which is amazing. And I was just like, I need you in my life. So it was such good timing for us as, as we were, um, yeah, it was kind of just coming into our first, our, actually our second kind of, well, we launched in kind of busy season, let's say September, October, November. And then that was kind of rounding it out. So it was kind of near anniversary. And I think I was like, okay, this is the next phase. Like I really want this, you know, my goal was to make this website grow and, and SEO is honestly where that where that's at and where that lies and where that growth comes from so I was definitely really willing to you know kind of take that leap and and bring you on board to to help dial that in and yeah the process I mean it's a lot like you take off so much off of my plate which was amazing and that was like the intention like I had done a couple you know freebie courses or whatever on SEO and I had learned a, a little bit but it's kind of, you know, it's not something that I love to do. It's not something I'm interested in, which is what makes you so great because you love it and like it's your thing and you're so good at it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that's kind of where everyone's expertise can kind of really play a, a pivotal role. And um, so, yeah, kind of the process when we started, I'd say it was, it was a lot initially because it was like the audit and these websites, but then you were like, okay, I'm going to take, like, when you came to me with that audit, I was like, oh my God, what did I do myself in? But then you were like, okay, like, I'm just explaining the process. And then it's because like, you, you're very good about communicating those expectations of like, this is what's, because there's so much behind the scenes in SEO. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah you're, you're so great at being like, hey, this, I'm going to take this whole bit and take it off your plate. I'm like, oh, thank God, I don't even need to even really look at it, let alone yeah. care. Yeah. Um, so that was really great. I love that bit. And then you're kind of like, okay, what's this content strategy? And and what I actually learned really was like, I kind of thought blogging was dead. I was like, I don't really read blog posts that often. I don't, you know, blogging, I found that it was like came in so strong and then, but now kind of social media has taken over. And what you really taught me was you're like, and kind of where I've landed. And I mean, this has taken, you know, so long for me to kind of really get here. And I was just kind of reflecting on our SEO journey together. And, yeah. and it's kind of, how do I want to say this? It's, I realized like how much more importance there is in the website where before about a year ago, I'd say I was leaning so much more on social media and I've really fallen back on. And again, even through kind of coaching through like my other business wild, which we'll get into later, I'm sure. But I've really leaned into like, no, your websites, like that's your, that's your baby. Like that's your store. Like you're not competing against anyone on your website. So like mm -hmm. if you can get some like eyeballs on your website, like then you're, then you've got them, like you're capturing them. How are you going to make them stay where before I was like social media, social media, and then the website was a landing page just to kind of, you know, kind of just convert people and have the sale on, you know what I mean? So, right. Yeah. I think you really opened that up to me. You've really been like, there's so much more and so much more depth to a website that I really never knew about. And it also kind of made me reflect on like how I am as a consumer. It's like when I say I don't read blog posts, but then when I'm Googling things, I right. land on all these blog posts and I end up reading them. <laughs> and I was like, oh, wait, okay. Like I do read blog posts. Um, so yeah, that was really interesting to kind of, really see how do you can optimize and utilize your website as you know this this kind of I want to say this like massive platform of like you can educate people you can teach people you know you can create a space for them to you know come on to so like through that one block like that through that portion of our blog posts those me time moments you know I bring other people into it and have you know other people's stories on it it doesn't just need to be 
Walsh, you know what I mean? Right. So there's just so many avenues of it, like, you know, like implementing quizzes and, um, you know, guides and how to's and recipe, like there's just so interactive on there. And, yeah. and I, re- I never really realized that, but kind of to answer your question about kind of what I found was difficult was I don't, I don't consider myself a good writer and I don't love to write. Like I like when you, when you're kind of like, yeah, write a blog post. I'm like, Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a lot to choose kind of like, here's your content strategy and you need to execute, you know, so many blog posts. And I was like, Whoa, okay. And I was like, okay, I hate writing though. Like I hate, like, you know, and it's that initial kind of like kickoff, like, you know, how do I start this? But you made it so easy in the sense of like the structure you built out for it. It's like, I really just needed to fill in the blanks and really just kind of, you know, tap a little bit into my writing skills. And then you gave me such great tips when I literally couldn't deliver. I was like, nope, I don't feel like I haven't felt inspired. <laughs> You're kind of like, Hey, why don't you try this or that? Or, you know, heading to a coffee shop and just like block off even just an hour or two hours. And I remember you, the next day I did that after you recommended that to me and I banged out a full blog post in like two hours, enjoyed a great cup of tea. And like, and it was such a good blog post that I was so proud of. So, um, you definitely help me along the way um to kind of get over those hurdles too so which was so great I'm so thankful for (laughs) Uh, thank you I mean that means a lot to me um and yeah well well, what did you find the most I mean anything else did you find kind of easier or just I mean what I really am interested all the time with my clients is how to Mm -hmm. connect their SEO efforts and the SEO tasks we do to the rest of the marketing because I think that's really where the success lies and that's something you did really well but what yeah what did you find like kind of opened your mind in general in your business yeah I mean that was really eye-opening to see again I think you I just listened to another one of your podcasts and I love that you guys said and and said it was you know your marketing is an ecosystem and SEO is just a portion of that Right. And that really hit home. I was like, whoa. So SEO is just a portion. And then I need to basically do every, like everything that I'm, that we're creating in this SEO, I need it to kind of, you know, bleed through the rest of it. And that's through mm-hmm. social and that's through the newsletter. And that's kind of through any contact or any outlet that I am trying to achieve uh, to, to get in front of my, my ideal customers. And I think that was, that was eye opening, but it was also, it kind of, it kind of was made me relieved because it was, you know, you're trying to generate so much content on Instagram yeah. and then content on Facebook and then, you know, Pinterest, whatever portals you're on, then your letter. And then you're trying to create, you know, like your, um, your, uh, sorry, it's slipping my mind, just kind of like your promotional calendar and just kind of like all these things. And it's like, okay, they don't all need to be like, what's this on this, on this portal. And what's this on this one? It's like, you, they all should be coinciding and working in a, in, you know, like a circular motion and they mm-hmm. all should be tied together. So when we created stuff together and through it, that was SEO focused, it's like, Whoa, now I have content for everything, which was right. amazing. So it right. kind of leaves that, that kind of, I'm trying to create so much content. It's like, no, like when you create this really amazing piece of content, it's like, you need to bleed that through every avenue of your business and really, you know, really push it out and get it out there. So yeah. that was, that was really eye opening for sure. Yeah, no, that's, that's perfect. <laughs> that's exactly what I, um, that's how I design the service. And it's the only way it's going to work the best because especially when you have a baby site, you need to have, um, all your market or, you know, you have to have some platforms that are pushing traffic intentionally and that boosts up your ranking in Google, it's kind of like a chicken and egg thing, but uh, it just works in unison. And um, a lot of people don't know that they just kind of think uh, you just publish and the people will come and it doesn't, it doesn't happen like that. I, I, wish. Definitely, I definitely thought that I was like, Oh, <laughs> like I remember publishing the first podcast or the first uh, blog post. And I was like, okay, I'm done. I never have to look at it again. <laughs> yeah. and I came to our through our continued work now, you're like, okay, well, like maybe let's pop back into this blog post. And I'm like, no, <laughs> like, <I don't> <laughs> but no, it's like, but then 
but then I see value in, you know, adding to it. And when you start seeing traction and when you start seeing, you know, the analytics behind yeah. certain things performing and I mean, that's, that's kind of the name of the game. Again, the chicken and the egg, it's like, we start seeing traction. So it's like, how can we beef that up? How can we make it better and serve our customers even more and better? Mm -hmm. Because clearly this is something that they're seeking. So how can we make this even a better experience for them? And I think that's kind of where we're at now is kind of, you know, we've, we've gotten all this traction and yeah, like some of the, the data that you were spitting off earlier is, yeah, it's, it's been insane. Like even like our, like our average order has gone up. It's about 200%. Wow. Um, yeah. And like the, you know, obviously the views on the website has been like tenfold, um, and just the amount of people like that stay on like the, their length of time, just cause now we have so much more content and, mm -hmm. and different content leads into another. So like their average, um, I don't know what that's time called in technical time spent. Yeah. 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 Time spent. And so it's, it's just, then that's what kind of keeps you going. You're just kind of like, okay, hey, I'm seeing all these numbers and, and it makes it all worth it. It makes like, you know, the content creation worth it and all the time and effort you put into it. And, and now I find myself like always tweaking things on my website. I'm always like, Ooh, how can I make this? <laughs> so now, yeah, it's definitely gotten to a point where I really, um, I do, I do really enjoy it. Yeah. And that's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's, it's been cool creating, um, you know, new, new posts and kind of coming from that intuitive approach of, you know, what I feel like writing a blog post on and, you know, where's my community at currently and, you know, what have they been reaching out to, to out to our brand for? And it's kind of like, okay, that's perfect content to create for them. Clearly they're needing it. So let's deliver it. So. Right. Right. Yeah. I want to take a step back and talk about what you were saying about blogging is dead. And I think that's such a, mm -hmm. such a, it's such a good way to put it. I've written about that before, but, um, What's it called? I think that, okay, so there's a couple of things I want to say there. So yes, blogging has changed quite a bit. Like I think at least my generation, I have memories of using like a platform called Blogger and you would like go on there and like write your little secret thoughts. <laughs> it was like a personal yeah. diary. Um, and now that still exists. Like there's still people who blog kind of from a very personal um, point of view. But if we're talking about blogging for business, uh, it is very, very different. And I think the relationship that people have with blogs and websites has changed. And so that's why it feels like blogging is dead. Um, sure. And I, what I say to my clients is, you know, there's 3.5 billion searches per day. And I can guarantee you that some of those searches are related to whatever you're selling. And so when I think about SEO, I think about how are we just answering people's questions through what they're asking about. And so you can separate and what I've done with, with you and with all my clients is I give you the opportunity to just blog and write about whatever you feel like writing. And you've done that really well. Like mm -hmm. when all this COVID-19 stuff ha started happening, you came to me and you're like, I really want to write about our immunity blend. I didn't give you that keyword. That was, that came a hundred percent from you. We later added keywords and optimized it from an SEO point of view, but you felt called and, and that came from a creative um, and intuitive side. Um, and that, so, so kind of separating that actually liberates creativity, right? Instead of saying every single post has to have these SEO structures and these SEO rules, that feels so like, even for me, that feels like just not like fun at all. Um, and instead you can separate, say, okay, we're going to create blog posts that are based off keywords, but you also get to write about whatever, you know, you know, your audience needs. And if there's some crossover, great. But I think that's the key to doing SEO, right? It's not about making every, and I'm sure there'll be some SEO experts out there who might disagree with me. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I feel like most people, you know, we just don't, think about the rules and why should you feel restricted, right? You want the creation of your website and adding content to your website to be um, a fun experience that generates even more ideas. And so that's, that's like my goal. If I can get you to a place where you're feeling good about that, then I feel like the rest gets taken care of along the way. 
I totally agree. Um, I love that you kind of said, again, it's, it's that external piece. It's like, you know, it's like these, these rules and these guidelines that have, you know, probably been here for centuries. But again, I think we're on this brink of, of or at least I am. And I don't, I don't know. I feel like people are with me, but, <laughs> who really knows? but again, I think like my kind of current theme right now is like, you know, be playful outside of the lines. And right. I think that's when real creativity happens. And that's when real kind of like authenticness happens and people will notice that. And I think just because everything's so diluted now, like there's so many brands and so many people on Instagram and so many, you know, so mm. many websites, so many companies and all this stuff. And it's like, how can you be different? And it's like, well, again, go inward. Like what, yeah. you know, what's serving you right now? What's lighting you up right now? And, and again, me as my brand, like I have a product based business, but you know, whatever I'm suffering with right now, I'm sure, you know, a lot of my community is, is my community can relate to me. Like that, you know, that's kind of why, right. why they've, kind of, you know, jumped on board. I, you know, I've created these blends from my own experience and my own, um, you know, need for them. And, you know, people have, have related to that and that's right. kind of where it all stems from. So it's like, you know, if I can be open and honest about what I'm going through on a personal, you know, on even, even on a personal or professional side. And it's like, you know, how I'm sure people can relate to that. So you mm-hmm. it's kind of, it's always going to be an experiment. It's always gonna be super playful. And, and again, I think it's about getting a little messy and playful in it because yeah, like who said we had to, you know, again, probably, you know, I want to say like a lot of the SEO people are going to say, no, like it's, it's this keyword, this, this keyword, this right. keyword, those ones that are, you know, probably tracking right now, mm-hmm. that's cool and all, but you know, that doesn't, that doesn't light me up or align with my brand. So no, I'm not going to write about something that doesn't light me up or serve me and my brand at all. So right. I think yeah, you can be a bit more intuitive about what you're putting out. People are going to notice. So yeah. yeah, I always say, uh, there are the people who are, you know, who's going to buy your product or service. It's another human and humans connect with other humans. It's your humanness. Oh. <laughs> that's going to generate that sale. And yes, like Google, um, you know, we're, we look at Google, like we look at how they scroll or rank our sites. Like there's all these like rules, but at the end of the day, even Google says to us, like, don't worry so much about me, like write great blog posts, create websites for other humans. So I think that there is a very robotic and number focused part of SEO. And that's the part that I like to just take off the plate of my clients so that they can feel more um, just like tap into this intuitive side. Of course, you know, some awareness has to happen. So I send you your monthly reports and there's a bunch of numbers in there and, um, and that's good. But uh, yeah, I feel like a lot of SEO experts, like my critique was that they, they give way too much data. Like I've seen, other reports and stuff and they're literally vomiting up numbers and it's like people don't care about that they just want to know like how can I increase my sales like how can I improve my website and anyway that's like my little rant but I I I totally agree yeah I think I mean kind of what from what you said it's like you really do create the space for me to be able to just create from that level Whereas like, I don't need to go, you know, hunting down my analytics. Like I emailed you the other day. I was like, I don't even know how to get all my Google. <laughs> I was like, help me. Like, so it's just, you know, you've just kind of, and again, you need to be in tune with that. And so I, I like, and again, those are where the, like you deliver this report to me and I'm like, okay, this is what I need to know. And this is what, and then I can, you know, we can dive into that more. If, yeah. if, if I feel called to like, you know, if I, numbers are interesting me, it's just like, Hey, let's, let's chat about my numbers or my analytics this month or whatever that looks like. But yeah, you really do create this space for me to, um, yeah, just kind of do what I like to do, which is right. great. And, and that's, I think what, what's so great about bringing people on that are experts in their lane and, you know, they're gonna, you don't need, I don't need to tap, I don't need to learn and tackle you know, SEO, that's, you know, that's what you're here for. And, and that's what you do so well, and you're lit up by it. So I don't have to be. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Um, So let's talk a moment about wild, because I think that's also a big part of this conversation. So why don't you tell people what wild is and a little bit how that got Mm -hmm. started? Yeah, so uh, wild came to be, it's actually wild business consulting. Um, It came to be about 
less than a year into launching Woj, so which was a bit crazy. And again, I felt super called to do it. It kind of, I just had a lot of people reaching out to me and being like, how did you launch your business in five months? How did you do this? You know, where, like, where do I start? Da, da, da. So I kind of saw this niche in the market. I was just kind of like, people are seeking help when, you know, launching a business is so daunting. It's such a big task and there's so many elements and aspects to it. And it's kind of, you know, if you have a small budget and, and but you're passionate and you just have an idea and you're just like, the world needs this or, or you feel really called to launch this into, into the community. Like, you know, I a hundred percent, there's, there's enough business and enough room for everyone. So don't ever be discouraged. Like, Oh, you know, I launch a tea business in the most highly saturated <laughs> market out there, like probably next to coffee. I, and like, even I think if you actually look up the stats, more people drink co- tea in the world than coffee. And right. so again, like, who was I to do that? And it honestly just came because that's like, I felt like I had something different to offer and that was through my personal experience. So, right. um, yeah, kind of, I, yeah, people kind of kept messaging me and I was, and I kept meeting with a lot of people. I was like, there's something here. So, um, yeah, I ended up kind of just getting really, again, intuitive and quiet with myself and being like, what does this process look like? And how did I do it? And I really had to kind of reflect on what those crazy five months look like. And I ended up, and I ended up, um, actually creating like a 10 step program, it's super simplified. It's like actionable, achievable steps. Um, they're just so approachable and it really just kind of, simplifies the entire process process of launching a business and also just gets you really clear. So, and this also can kind of go into like pivoting your business too. So, um, you know, every it's basically created with like different workshops and, and they're all probing questions. And, and then I work one-on-one with people if they need that kind of extra hand to, um, you know, kind of bounce ideas off of me, that sounding board and kind of being that a little bit of a guiding light. And, and I think what, makes this super unique and beneficial is the fact that I just went through it and it's so fresh in my mind that I can relate I let like when I work with one-on-one with people it's so cool that what they're going through I was like not there just like not too long ago and then it's like so I just can relate on such a deeper level than someone you know let's say they own you know like a multi-million dollar company and and they launched it you know however many years ago and they're trying to mentor you and coach you they're not going to understand where you're at so yeah um yeah that's kind of where it started and and how it came to be and um and it's also kind of it's a, it's a creative outlet for me it, it helps me it's just kind of this other passion of mine. Um, so like, Woj is kind of this piece where I get to be really creative with like creating tangible and, and like really cool products in this, and this kind of lifestyle brand and this experience for people and really getting people connected back to nature and that those healing modalities and, and creating this kind of, you know, lifestyle around slowing down and, um, you know, kind of connecting back to your roots a little bit. And then wilds like, this outlet of this creative outlet of mine where I get to share all the nitty gritty and like this wild ride behind Woj and what's going on. And, and something that I love so much is, is to share what's, what's like currently going on. It's not about like, Oh yeah, a year ago, you know, like we had this many whatever sales and now we have this many. It's like, this is what I'm currently doing to you know kind of grow that and it's really like kind of you know in real time I want to say is is that's kind of how I like to share it and that's what really lights me up about it so to kind of take people along for that ride because you know I'm sure majority of businesses can relate to where I'm at and and I it always frustrated me so much (laughs) that like any sort of you know mentor or all these people that are so inspiring that we look up to they're great to kind of see like where's our goals where we're headed but again, it's always like they talk about it from an aspect of I'm, I'm, I'm here and you're way back here. Right. I've made it and you're way back here. This is how I did it. But again, another thing that I really believe and this shows up a lot in Wild is, and where I encourage people and where a lot of my workshops tailor to is what my success looks like is not going to look like your success. I don't even care if you have a tea business that literally looks the identical to mine my trajectory to success will be so different than yours. And if you don't own that and really like lean into that, you're not going to get there. And I, that was kind of the biggest learning curve. I want to say probably heading into year and heading into year two of business was like, you know, I, again, that whole external piece, you're looking at other brands being like, Mm -hmm. I want to be there. I want to get there. How did they do it? 
Yeah. And that's, I think that's honestly the worst approach you could have. It's like, no, it's like, what, what, what are your innate skills? Like, what are you really, really good at? Because that's where you're going to excel in your business. And that's, what's going to move your business forward. Right. And when I really started to lean into that, um, yeah, heading into year two, that was a big reflection piece right there and a big pivot in my business actually and that's kind of when I that's actually right when we started working together too and I was like whoa whoa wait like I was I was following these people's footsteps basically treading water keep trying to keep my head above above water and it wasn't working so I was like whoa what's next what do I actually want and that's where this big pivot came into and and yeah like I just I feel like I've never I feel so just in line of where my business is headed and where I'm headed personally. And, and even juggling these two businesses is, is crazy in itself, but, um, but they just, yeah, they just work for me. I don't know. They both. And again, that kind of speaks to like being multi-passionate. I find a lot of people don't start a business because they are always debating, you know, which idea is best or I love so many things. It's like, okay, we'll do them all, but like, you know, start somewhere, <laughs> yeah. you know, start here. And you know, I, I never really knew that I was, I think I always kind of, I love connecting with people and I love, you know, kind of helping people and coaching people. And I think I, I innately have a very different perspective on things. I always have a bird's eye view of everything where I think a lot of people are very in things. And, and again, we're all just so unique. Um, and yeah, so I just kind of, I, you know, I never would have thought that I would have started this a, less than a year into Woj, but it happened. And, and it's, oh, I love, I love them both equally. They're, they both <laughs> light me up in such different ways. I love that. Thanks for sharing all that. And I like, I so agree that sometimes we end up doing this whole merry-go-round of realizing that our initial idea, our initial instinct was on, like it was right on. And we have to like go and like try different things or like listen to different speakers. And then we're like, oh, you know, I can start, you know, two businesses um, and run them at the same time. Or like, I'm allowed, literally, there's just a million combinations of success. And the only thing we need to worry about is our combination. And that's, that's hard. It's hard because, you know, it's scary. It's scary. For some reason, we're so scared of, of this inside intuition that sometimes we're not really sure how to listen to it or trust it. But at the end of the day, this is really the, the gold and it's something I keep coming back to that. Yeah. It's not good to compare, but it's just so human, right? We're, we're just, well, that's just kind of how we've been. Yeah. It's like how we've been kind of conditioned and raised and you know, it's yeah. always like, what, you know, and that's on Like if you, even if you think of the school system, it's like, yeah. Oh, what? So we're all doing the same test. And like, I did poor, so bad in high school. Like I did, it was so like I kind of came out of there being like I don't even know if I'm I'm not smart I'm not good at anything like I was never excelled at anything in in high school but then like you know after my 10-year you know journey of of seeking my purpose and a lot of traveling and a lot of soul searching and a lot of trial and error and and again all of those pieces were were a part of the lessons that I needed to learn to kind of get to this space of right you know, I know, you know, the answers and, and I, if I listen to myself and listen to, you know, what lights me up and where I'm headed, that's, that's where the gold is. And that's, what's going to make me different, you know, or else, yeah. or else it's going to be competing kind of tirelessly with everybody else, I think. So. Absolutely. Yeah. I love it. Well, I really appreciate your transparency. And I think that's what makes wild, um, uh, this wild what ride, uh, very, very inspiring because I, I totally agree. I feel like when you're starting, you just need a different fire um, by you. And a lot of people, when they're farther along, I think what I've grown to understand is that it's good to have different resources and different voices, you know, in your arsenal of your toolkit, you know? So I, I don't, I used to be very much like there's one coach I follow or there's one thing Mm -hmm. and this is everything. And now I'm like, no, there's actually like this array of people I follow. And depending on what I'm needing in the moment, someone's going to give me a little bit more of that vibe or that energy. And, and then of course, tuning in and not following anybody sometimes, you know, just, um, you know, unsubscribing and doing like a little bit of, um, insulation of like what it, what's my truth. Cause I, again, especially at the beginning, it's so easy to like absorb different. And I think that's kind of part of the process you absorb and you integrate and then you discover your own voice. Like I'm not saying you shouldn't follow anybody, 
but I, I, there's like, yeah, it's underrated kind of just sitting quietly and, or, or not quietly and listening to our own truths and experimenting from that place instead of just looking externally. Totally. Oh yeah. I love that you said too, like, you know, sometimes you need to kind of mute them all. And that was a big thing for me. I was following a lot of brands and I was, so it, it got to a point where I was like, oh, I'm not inspired with the post. Oh, I'll just go check what they've posted and like right. what, which like makes, you know, kind of made me laugh or, yeah. or something that I've been reading. And then I try to like recopy it. I'm like, this isn't how this works. So I love that you kind of, yeah, you did like that whole absorbing part. And I think it's again with wild, it's like, I want to share that, you know, if you start, you know, if you can start this in, and hone your innate skills early on in the beginning of your business, I mean, you're already ahead of the game by a thousand because right. you know, even me, I spent my first year of business, you know, kind of, you know, following a lot of other people trying to, you know, do their steps. And that was a big learning curve for me. And then it was like, okay, now what's next? And then that was that reflection in and I had to mute and block and delete a lot of people. Yeah. Um, just kind of, you know, I love the saying of like, create before you creep or whatever um yeah like I think that there's so much to be said there so I think it's a balance of both and I love that you said too um about you know like have a have a plethora of people that you follow in and you know in in all different avenues and I think we can you know you can relate to a little bit of every of everything and kind of when you pick something up from someone just kind of do a quick check-in like Mm -hmm. does this align with me and my brand or do I just want it because you know because of you know, again, that external validation because of where she's at. And I think, and I, like, I believe that that's how that's going to get me there. It's like, no, does it align with your values of your business mm-hmm. and what you stand for? And again, your innate skills, you're only going to be really good at what your innate skills are. And yeah. yeah so Love it. All right. So to just wrap up a little bit, mm-hmm. so what would be like, just kind of culminating everything we talked about? <laughs> I know we talked about a lot of stuff. But um, what would you say to someone who is uh, starting a business, they're maybe in the first couple of months and um, they're thinking about doing SEO, but they're thinking about all their marketing and and just Mm -hmm. the whole picture. What would you say is like one piece of advice? And it doesn't have to be something like go like start a blog or something, maybe something Mm -hmm. more like internal work. But what would you say to someone who's feeling like a little lost or just kind of all over the place? I think my number one piece of advice for anyone kind of in the new stage of being a business is, and this is an exercise, actually it'll be a freebie soon. So stay tuned. Wow, exciting. <laughs> <laughs> but is just honestly get really honest with yourself about what, what do you like doing? What do you hate doing? Right. Um, you know, what, where do you spend your, t- like, where do you find yourself like thinking about most or, you know, dreaming about most or what inspires you the most. Um, and also again, you know, the opposite, like, what do you really dislike? What do you, what are the aspects on, of your business that sit on your to-do list and they sit on there forever and ever and ever because you don't like doing them. Um, this is going to kind of be like that first stepping stone of really getting to know who you are as a business owner and who you are within your business and when you can really lean into what you are good at yeah. and stick to that and kind of, you know, really optimize and utilize your innate skills. And again, I say innate because it's like you are very, very good at probably a variety of things. But if you don't know what those are, and again, it's often most of my clients that I work with, they overlook it completely because this these tasks and and this ability comes so easy to them that they yeah. don't they think everybody is the same because right. it's that innate to them and i think that's kind of always my like our big breakthroughs is when i've pointed something out because again i come from this bird's eye view and this outside perspective of of you know i go, i make them work through a bunch of workshops and questionnaires and stuff and we and i can start seeing threads through it right and so if you can kind of you know create this practice for yourself and you know just really get honest about what you like doing and what you don't and lean into that within your business stay in your in your own lane and stay in your own zone and then i mean for me and again i know so many businesses are like i don't have the budget for that or whatever but again i didn't really have the budget for it but i made it work yeah and you know, outsource the things that you don't like doing. If they can be done by someone better that, you know, again, are their innate skills, 
they're going to do it a hundred times better than you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. And it's going to open up so much space within your business to be able to, you know, stay in your own lane and do those things that you love doing. So Mm -hmm. I guess kind of, does that make sense? Or do you you kind of want to No, no, no. That totally makes sense. And I feel like when you identify those things, it not only liberates a lot of energy, um, Mm -hmm. you just, I don't know, you're more productive. The other person helps you grow. So you end up making more money anyway. Like we sometimes just feel like, yeah, we have to do it all. And it's kind of normal because it's like your baby and there's like this possessive thing (laughs) happening. But um I agree. That's great. Yeah. It's great. I think with, I think probably one last thing I want to leave people with again, and this kind of falls into like the outsourcing and bringing people on that are, you know, good in those, good in those areas that you don't like doing is, and I get with that kind of trust piece, cause it's your baby and you really, you know, you're just kind of like, do I trust them? Are they even going to get it? Are they even going to be, be able to produce? And yeah. kind of just whenever you're bringing somebody on, like really make sure that they that they're in line with your values and that they have the same interests as you like for you like you focus on health and wellness businesses and and again and then I notice that your innate skills are SEO and numbers and analytics and like that data portion and I'm like okay you're the perfect candidate for to bring on to my business so it's it's kind of do your due diligence it's not just right. like you know going to that big well-known place or that person that's that your friend recommended maybe they don't align with your business but they align with your friends so right again being super honest with yourself and figuring out what what is in line i think it all comes back to our own personal values for sure at the end of the day right I like it cool so where can people um hang out with you i'll include all your um your website and your um, Instagram and all that in the show notes, but, uh, is there anything specific you want to share? Yeah. I mean, um, well, there's so many places you can, uh, connect with me on Woash's Instagram. So that's, uh, W O A S H wellness. And then also if you want to connect more on the business front and reach out about anything business wise, I just love to chat anyways. So just reach out. Um, that's for the wild business consulting and that's actually at wild with a Y. So W Y L D ride R I D E. Um, on Instagram. So either of those, you can definitely connect. Um, I think probably a new and exciting announcement is that I will be launching our wild website in about hopefully this, (laughs) this coming week. Um, and then you're going to be able to find so many just like free resources. You're going to be able to access the workshops and the 10 steps. Um, and then you're going to, yeah. So if you're ever thinking about launching a business or pivoting, or just, you kind of feel lost in your business right now, um, that will be, yeah, hopefully a really great resource for you. That's definitely affordable and accessible and will definitely kind of kickstart you and on your kind of trajectory of getting that done. So yeah, I think that's it. Awesome. I will, um, if that the website's ready by the time that this goes live, I'll definitely share that as well. But this was really, really great. Thank you so much, Cassie. Thank you for having me. It was so nice chatting with you. Hey, this is Cynthia. And I wanted to once again, thank you so much for coming on and listening to this episode of the Digitally Overwhelmed podcast. I spend a lot of time creating these episodes and editing them and publishing them. So I would love for you to leave me a review, whatever platform you're listening to your podcast on, whether it's iTunes or something else, go ahead and click on that review bar, give me some stars and leave a little comment. That really helps other people just like you find the podcast and just helps them grow their business. And if you want to find out more about this episode and more about what I do, get uh, links from the show notes that we mentioned in this episode, you could head on over to digitalbloomiq.com forward slash podcast. And there the latest podcast should be published. If not, you'll need to scroll through and find your podcast number. Thank you so much for listening again, and I'll catch you on the next episode of the Digitally Overwhelmed podcast. Bye.